I don't think practice makes perfect. I don't think perfect is, I don't think perfect is the goal. So both halves of that sentence are a problem. The, the thing with perfect is perfect by definition is unattainable. Salut les amis et bienvenue dans Inspiration Créative, le podcast qui explore les apprentissages et les stratégies des créateurs les plus fascinants. Je m'appelle Kylian Talin et dans chaque épisode, je pars questionner les meilleurs créateurs pour comprendre les choix et les décisions qui ont changé leur vie. Cet épisode est sponsorisé par Patreon qui est le sponsor officiel de cette saison 4 et je tiens à les remercier du fond du cœur de me soutenir là-dedans et je suis très heureux de travailler avec eux car ils se battent pour les mêmes causes que moi permettre aux créateurs de travailler sur ce qu'ils aiment et être payés en retour par les gens qui aiment leur travail Le fonctionnement est très simple, Patreon vous permet chaque mois de recevoir directement de la part de votre communauté une contribution financière pour vous permettre de vous concentrer sur votre travail et ça, peu importe votre domaine de création c'est une plateforme qui est créée par des créateurs et donc ils ont bien compris que la créativité nécessitait de sortir des sentiers battus et donc grâce à ce support directement de la part de vos fans ça vous permet de vous concentrer sur la chose la plus importante à savoir vos créations et vos projets Je suis très fier qu'on puisse vous aider ensemble à progresser sur cette saison 4 et je vous encourage tout de suite à aller jeter un oeil au site www.patreon.com Je vous mets le lien dans la description. L'épisode du jour est magistral et aussi un petit peu spécial parce que j'accueille quelqu'un qui est anglophone et qui s'appelle Seth Godin. Je sais pas si vous connaissez Seth mais il a une sacrée réputation, c'est quelqu'un qui est auteur et conférencier, qui a travaillé au tout début chez Yahoo euh, il y a longtemps 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 et il développe depuis plusieurs années des workshops et des ateliers pour permettre aux créateurs, aux freelanceurs, aux entrepreneurs de monter en compétences avec Akimbo et c'était un de mes rêves de l'année d'aller le rencontrer à New York parce que c'est quelqu'un qui a sans doute plus que quiconque influencer mon travail avec inspiration créative. Et je suis donc très heureux de vous partager aujourd'hui notre discussion et tous les sujets qu'on a abordés. Attention néanmoins, c'est un épisode un peu spécial pour deux raisons. La première, c'est qu'il est entièrement en anglais et donc je vais vous le mettre sous-titré pendant tout l'épisode. Donc euh, ça change un petit peu d'habitude, mais ça va vous plaire. Et la deuxième, c'est qu'il est très court. J'ai l'habitude de faire des formats qui durent une heure parce que je trouve que ça permet d'aller en fond. Mais avec 7, vous allez voir que c'est quelqu'un qui pèse chacun de ses mots. Et donc on a fait un épisode très court et très intense qui dure une vingtaine de minutes. Il a des leçons fascinantes à partager sur l'originalité, la créativité, l'entrepreneuriat, le marketing, la création de communauté. C'est quelqu'un d'absolument génial. Je suis sûr que ça va beaucoup vous plaire. Et si vous prenez le temps d'écouter, ça va vous éveiller sur plein de choses dans votre tête. Alors, ouvrez bien vos oreilles et profitez-en. Bonne écoute So, thanks again for, for your time. We, we are really happy to have you for the next, <laughs> the next minute. So, thanks for that. So, maybe just for a little intro. Uh, our communities are mostly mine and freelancers, so I work with l l solo businesses. Yeah, and Kilians are creators. Yeah, creative people that create a lot of stuff on the internet. So mostly, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to kick off with three questions. We put quite a bit of thought into what are the three questions we wanted to ask <laughs> you for this free question adventure, and I'll let Kilian kick it off. Sure. So I will I will start with the first one. Um, so I loved your book, The Practice, um, especially because it's targeted to, to creators for creators. And we often say that um, practice makes perfect, but I was curious to dig into that a little bit further because I know how effective it can be to focus on the right practice. So yeah. what practices makes a creator or a freelancer perfect? And maybe what are the things that you have practiced and repeated over and over in your life that makes you walk, move forward on, or on the right way? That's a great place to start. Uh, I don't think practice makes perfect. I don't <laughs> think perfect is. I don't think perfect is the goal. So both halves of that sentence are a problem. the The thing with perfect is perfect by definition is unattainable. That even if you look at the the most carefully crafted automobile or piece of jewelry or anything, you can find some flaw with it. Mm. And if we wait for perfect, we will be waiting forever particularly if you call yourself a creative or particularly if you deal with other human beings, perfect is just not on the table. So take it off the table. That's not the goal. The goal is to matter. The goal is to be missed if you're gone. The goal is to make a change happen. And that makes more sense, but is also scarier than perfect because perfect gives you deniability. You can't blame me. It's perfect. Mm. Whereas if we put something into the world that's idiosyncratic, we're on the hook. And I think being on the hook is a good place to be. And then the thing about practice is when I am talking about the practice, what I'm saying is each person who is a successful creator of anything, whether you're a freelancer or a creator, um, you have a method. You have what you need to trigger you, what room, what setting, what people, what timing. All of these things are choices. Hmm. And 
So what I'm challenging people to do is begin by saying there's no such thing as writer's block, that uh, you're not an imposter, that perfect isn't your goal, and then begin the practice of shipping the work because that's how you increase your skill and that's where your reputation comes from. Mm. So what I love about that is how it's very individual focused. Everyone has their own criteria, like you said, the room, the people, the metrics. I'm curious about you in hindsight of looking at your your vision, because I think that's also what we're curious about is from your side, what have been your criteria, the specific ones that have made a difference in your practice? Well, I think the most transferable one is the daily blog. Hmm. Uh, I've done 8,000 posts in a row, haven't missed a day. I recommend that everybody do this, no matter what your hmm. current practice is. Because you know tomorrow will be Wednesday and there'll be a blog on a post on my blog, it won't be there because it's perfect or because it's the best one I ever wrote. It will be there because it's Wednesday. And so I don't have to have a new discussion with myself about whether work will be shipped. Work mm -hmm. will be shipped. So now the only discussion is, what do I want to do? How do I want to show up? And that becomes a 25-year-long engine of seeing the world, of engaging with an audience day by day, when the economy is good or when the economy is bad when I'm busy and when I'm not busy, when I have a cold and when I don't. And that has paid many, many dividends for me. Yeah, I really love that because the power is in showing up and then you have the, the, the ability to change it every day in the way you, you show up. And um, I really wanted to, to just pinpoint something you shared about um, 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 helping people to make a change. And in doing that, do you see other practices or other stuff that you have done that may, that helped people in, in that, mm. in the change they wanted to, in helping them changing? Mm. I'm not really sure I understand where you want me to go with that. Can sure. you try it a different way? Yeah, yeah. maybe I can, do you want yeah. me to rephrase? Yeah. Go ahead. I, I think what Kilian's saying, and he can second me on that is in making that little shift from I'm looking for perfect into I'm looking for a daily practice and shipping. If you have you seen things that have helped you create that shift in other people? I think that that's 25 years in my career. Mm. That's what I'm trying to do. From the time I was a canoeing instructor in Canada, what I'm showing up to say to people is talent is irrelevant. Skill can be learned. You have the choice to make things better for other people. What will you do right now? What will you do this afternoon? Not because you feel like it, but because you can, because if it turns out that you can, then you can learn to feel like it. Mm. And, you know, if, if, if I had a long definition for my blog or my books or the kind of teaching I do, it would be what you just asked me as the question. Like, mm. what am I doing for people? What I'm trying to do for people is help them see that they have something to contribute and that they can do it today. Mm. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for the formulation. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Love that. Cool. And, um, Maybe this will link into the second question of the three that we wanted to ask you, but what you just said about helping people to see, I think is a big part of everything you talk about, like you just said. And I think in this question of the practice, there's this thing of how like people maybe are advancing in a direction and they don't see what's my thing. And the next question we're going to go into is going to the edge and I'll link into that afterwards, but is there a moment maybe or something that helps people in your experience to suddenly like turn the lights on? Because I feel that lots of people are in the dark and they don't see what is my thing. Yeah. So it's authenticity is a trap. You weren't born with a thing and mm. there is no thing that you can pick that is going to be something that had been preordained. Miles Davis wasn't born with a trumpet in his hand that there were lots of things Miles could have done. I think he was a boxer at some point, but he ended up, his thing was playing a certain kind of music for a certain kind of audience. So for me, it's not what's the label, what will they write in your obituary? It's mm. what mode are you in when you are the best version of yourself? Mm. For an emergency room doctor, it's different than it is for a novelist. Right? The novelist is in their best mode when there's no one in the room and when the book is due in six months. Whereas an emergency room doctor would go crazy in that setting. 
But after the novelist has published their novel and it changed someone's life, they made a connection. After the emergency room doctor has cured somebody or seen somebody who had felt unseen, they've made a connection. So mm. we're using up all this atmosphere and all this space and burning all this carbon for why? To make a difference for somebody. So we got to say, what's the change we seek to make? Who are we seeking to change? I love these ideas of finding the, the mode. I think it's, it's really useful. Yeah. yeah. We were really curious about the idea of going to the edge with our second question. Yeah. You want to? Sure. So what we, it's, I love the fact that you said authenticity is a trap just before we got to this, because what I was going to say is with your talking about going to the edge and not creating average work, and really differentiating in our own specific way. I was going to say, I think people see uh, finding your own kind of weird as a path, which is often linked to authenticity. <laughs> But I love how you just sort of like scooped that out of, out of the, uh, the field right away. So what I wanted to come to is, I feel there's this sort of opposition between people desire to find their thing, find their mode, go to the edge in their own way. And at the same time, and maybe that's due to how the world is at the moment, I feel there's a big and bigger pushback the fact that there's more and more polarization like online discussions are more and more vivid and there's also i feel in our two communities at least this kind of fear of stepping out too much and mm -hmm. so i'm curious of what you your thoughts on that opposition of i want to stand out and i want to go to the edge and at the same time i'm scared of it actually happening for real sure well you should talk to steve pressfield i mean this is resistance If you step out too much, it's a form of hiding mm. because you are putting your face in front of a hand that wants to punch somebody. And of course, you can't be expected to do real work because you're being punched. On the other hand, if you fit in all the way, you don't matter and you might as well not show up. So the practice for me is not about what does social media think of you or how many friends do you have. The practice is who's your smallest viable audience? Is it one person? That would be enough. Is it your six-year-old godson? That would be enough. Is it a hundred people in this community or a thousand people in that town? Who are you seeking to change? And you can ignore everyone else. Mm. But the opportunity for each of us is to say, yeah, I need to make a living at this. So I need three clients who would miss me if I was gone, who have a big enough corporate budget to pay me six figures a year. And I don't care about anybody else. Because if, particularly if you're a freelancer, your future is defined by your clients. If you get better clients, you have a better future. So instead of whining about what the people you're working for want from you, pick who you're going to work for. Hmm. Which links back into finding your mode with the practice of getting yeah. deep with those people and not the others. So maybe we can jump out to the third one. Yeah, sure. Sure. And, and, and we'll, we'll keep going on that. Um, we were really curious about um, some things um, in your work, in your books, in all the, the blog posts and the knowledge you shared. Um, we, we see that some ideas are sometimes in the society undervalued and some of them are overvalued. And we were, we were really curious to, to see with you some of them that you feel might have been undervalued and some of them might have been overvalued. So mm. what's you, your thoughts on that? Well, I don't think anyone will be surprised that uh, lots of people in internet culture are looking for a short run, quick fix that enables them to, quote, get the word out or make a living or hit their numbers this week. And I almost never blog or write about that. But when I do, that's what people think I do. They call me a marketer. I think it's way more important that people focus on climate and education and dignity. But those are the posts I do that tend to get the least amount of traction. I don't care. I'm still doing them because that's my work. I'm here, not here to please the maximum number of people. I know how to do that. Mm. I just don't want to do that. And, you know, this mindset of hustle that has come upon us, which is now amplified with the whole GameStop thing. I mean, short-term hustle You never meet someone who is a short-term hustler five years ago who says, I'm glad I did that and I'm still doing it. Never happens. And um, I think it's also one of the things we thought with this question is relevant is 
in even just this conversation, there's probably things that people will hear and they're like, oh yeah, I've heard Seth say that already. And that goes in one ear and out, whereas it's the basis of an idea that can really change how we go about our day-to-day things. And on the other side, they'll probably hear you say maybe one little thing they hadn't heard yet. And they'll be like, oh, that's the key. Finally, I hadn't heard him say that yet. <laughs> what, do you, what would you say to those people? Well, I mean, I don't repeat myself because I'm out of ideas. Mm. I repeat myself because these are the things that actually work. And, you know, I can't tell you. I mean, I wrote this as marketing because I kept getting asked the same things over and over again. And status roles and affiliation, it doesn't take me very long to talk it through. But I was like, let me just write something for those people. Mm. And what they really want to hear is, well, if you put a number in the subject line and you tweet at three o'clock and you have a squeeze page, your revenue will go up 15%. Like, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Sure. And one last thing around this question of overvalued and undervalued. So we are talking mostly to creators and freelancers. Is there an idea that you loved, but that has felt undervalued by the people that read you or or meet you that is really important to you and that would help uh, a lot creators and freelancers? Well, I mean, I think there's a bunch of them. That's what someone who writes like I do does is we pay attention to the ones that people haven't understood yet. So we try to find a new way to say them. So I'm not sure itemizing them here is going to make it more likely that someone gets the joke. Um, you know, what happens is people rationalize themselves that they have to play the bad game and race to the bottom because they got to pay the bills. Yeah. And then they're trapped. And if you're on Fiverr or if you're on Elance, you've already given up because you're racing to the bottom. And the problem with the race to the bottom is you might win. And so my argument is take the short amount of time it takes to actually do the reading, understand the genre, figure out who the clients you want to have are, figure out what kind of work you would need to do before they found you so that they would want to find you. And too many creators, I hear from them every day by email, say, well, I'd love to do that, but my clients won't let me. (laughs) Well, get better clients. And we come back to that. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Seth. Yeah. Anything to add? I just want to say once again, thank you. I feel like I've heard these over and over again, but each time I hear them, it's a a great rebound. So ultra precious. So thanks a lot. Glad I could be of help. Keep making a ruckus, guys. (laughs) Thanks. See you, Seth. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Merci à tous d'avoir écouté cet épisode, je suis très content de vous l'avoir partagé, j'espère qu'il vous a plu. C'est moi, quelqu'un qui m'a énormément éveillé au cours des dernières années et c'est un plaisir de pouvoir vous partager ces quelques enseignements. Trier sur le volet, il y a peut-être 5, 6, 7 leçons vraiment intéressantes à retenir. Si ça vous a plu, abonnez-vous à la chaîne, ça m'encourage et ça me permet de continuer à vous donner le maximum pour vous aider à mieux créer, mieux produire, mieux promouvoir ce que vous faites en tant que créateur. Et puis comme je le dis toujours, c'est un plaisir d'échanger avec vous, alors mettez-moi un petit commentaire sur ce que vous avez pensé de l'épisode et vous pouvez compter sur moi pour vous répondre dans la foulée. Je vous souhaite une trop bonne journée et on se retrouve dans une semaine pour le prochain épisode de la saison.